NASA says that right now there is a mind-blowing, basic chance to zero in on the world Venus. This follows the new discoveries of conceivable life on the planet. Assuming you somehow end up researching NASA's records from the 1960s, you'd see the space organization calling Venus a planet of judgment. In the meantime, Mars became our essential objective. Such cautious naming of the fundamental planets wasn't ordinary during the wild space race period. The Soviet Union was centered on sending missions to Venus. The stunning planet showed essentially no potential for life, yet the Soviet space program didn't decommission the Venera program until the fall of the USSR. On account of Neil deGrasse Tyson, we finally figure out why. Join us as we look at the declassified photographs from Venus, taken by the Soviet Union. The fall of the Soviet Union was huge in more ways than one. Not only did it change the global course of the world, but the breakdown of the USSR also unlocked many mysteries. The fact that the Soviets had a deep penchant for maintaining secrets, from running the most subtle intelligence agency in the world to being secretive about their actual capabilities, suggests that extraterrestrial contact was one of those secrets. The former superpower holds many untold stories. Before the U.S. outperformed most planetary missions in space, the Soviet Union was leading the game. While the USSR had a long history of both successful and failed space missions, its greatest focus was on the very antagonistic planet Venus. In the Russian language, you'd see Venus referred to as Venera, which is also the name of the mission that lasted from 1961 to 1983. During the same time, the U.S. was busy sending its missions to the moon. In a way, the Soviets chose to use their resources elsewhere. We can't say that the entire fixation on the second planet from our sun is odd. Did the Soviets want to use the planet's surface as a potential power station? Or were they perhaps hoping to colonize the planet after searching for any signs of movement beneath the surface? The question remains, why were the Soviets so focused on this severe planet as they conducted these missions during the Cold War? They weren't completely open about their objectives. In fact, Everything we know about the Venusian missions comes from declassified and unarchived data. Still, after such extensive effort pinpointing what the Soviets were truly searching for, and whether they ever uncovered the secrets of Venus, we can only make reasonable assumptions. The Soviets didn't land on Venus once or even twice, but many times. In fact, the Soviets launched 28 expensive rockets toward the planet. Moreover, 13 of those entered the Venusian atmosphere, while eight actually landed. Such complex missions placed the Soviets in a leading position in space exploration. Sure, the U.S. was a close second, but NASA was more focused on satellites and innovative technology than on looking for life on other planets. Their attention was on Mars, which, in turn, wasn't especially strange or particularly exciting. Your history textbooks may not tell you this, but the Soviet space program was the first to send a probe into the air of a planet other than Earth. It also had another set of firsts to its name. The USSR became the first country to achieve a soft landing on another planet, returning pictures and sounds from the surface of that planet. In fact, the Soviets had their own one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind moment, long before the US. So why do we seldom hear about such accomplishments? Well, remember what we said about the Soviet tendency to keep secrets. That's just one of many reasons for the oversight of the Soviet space program. In 1992, the famous organization was decommissioned following the breakdown of the USSR, and the program had to be revived under a new Russian entity, Roscosmos. Many of its original records were either lost or destroyed. This is precisely why we don't have a clear answer regarding why the Soviets launched 28 rockets into Venus' atmosphere. Still, we can make the most sensible assumption. Perhaps the Soviet decision to explore Venus was more about cost-effectiveness than anything else. It's not to say that the space program didn't recognize the planet's genuine potential. They were searching for reasonable levels of water, sunlight, radiation, and the general characteristics of the planet. Without a series of these space missions, it would have been incredibly difficult to assess Venus's high temperatures and thick atmosphere. Today, Many space experts don't believe that the hostile planet can support life. The temperatures there are high enough to melt lead, and water is scarce. Moreover, due to its thick atmosphere, the atmospheric pressure on Venus is more than 90 times that of Earth. However, there are still ongoing advancements, 
and to disregard the USSR's contribution to the exploration of Venus is to revise history. As far as the Soviets were concerned, Venus was worth exploring, even though filling the space race by looking at other, more hospitable planets like Mars wasn't entirely impossible. It was, however, more expensive than sending probes to Venus. Everything basically comes down to the distance from Earth to another celestial body. On average, the hostile planet is only 40 million kilometers away from our home, while Mars is, on average, 250 million kilometers away. Such huge differences in distance result in massive differences in cost. Had the U.S. not been the world's largest economy, it may have never even explored Mars with such ease. Other reports suggest that Soviet missions were risky and had significant technical gaps. Clearly, the rockets weren't capable of covering vast distances. Moreover, the agency had a poor history of losing contact with its rockets. So, it makes sense why the Soviet space program chose a more practical and somewhat closer mission that would yield results. Still, if we don't consider the space race in this context, the story of the Venera missions would be incomplete. The U.S. wasn't even on the space map when the Soviet program launched the first artificial satellite, Sputnik 1, in 1957. This move kicked off the space race and kept its momentum. What's especially interesting is the reason the U.S. focused on the moon instead of Venus. NASA had a series of failures with its Venus missions during the 1960s, and consequently, the U.S. space agency hit a barrier known as the Venus Curse. Each time they launched a probe into Venus' atmosphere, it failed. This was precisely when the Soviet Union saw an opportunity to capitalize on NASA's failures. At that time, both the U.S. and the USSR were determined to win the space race. The best strategy was to take advantage of two distinct opportunities. It was a quiet yet decisive approach. The Soviet space program seized Earth's sister planet as its first victory in the space race, accomplishing something its main rival had failed to do. Despite the Soviet Union's limited resources and faltering government, they repeatedly launched missions to Venus to maintain their lead over the U.S. In contrast to NASA's focus on the moon, this strategic choice was not without ill will. Moreover, smart propaganda was used to cloud their significant failures with Venus. The American government was prompted to investigate the USSR's obsession with the planet, with the media labeling Venus the evil planet, while Mars became humanity's fate. These names didn't matter to the Soviets. Their mission was to demonstrate their supremacy over the Americans, and they succeeded in doing so. The Venera missions are nearly forgotten in modern history, but despite their early challenges, these missions were extraordinarily complex, advanced, and aggressive. At the beginning of the space age, the Venera missions paved the way. Back in the 1950s, the Soviets started testing the plans and technical details of the probes. Over the next 30 years, they proceeded to build and launch interplanetary rockets as part of the Venera program. Since the program ran alongside the Cold War, the Soviets focused on optimizing their resources. Fortunately for them, the early years of the conflict provided them with more resources than the U.S., which turned out to be incredibly significant. It allowed them to build larger rockets designed to break through high altitudes and cover vast distances. The Soviets raced to experiment with both manned and unmanned rockets, while the Soviet intellectual community worked on a series of calculations and assessments to create accurate routes for the Venus missions. In the background, their Mars programs were also running. Nothing was more important than developing advanced instrumentation for these missions. This led to significant breakthroughs in the history of space exploration. In 1966, the Soviet Union launched Venera 3, making it the first artificial probe to enter the atmosphere of Venus and successfully land on the planet's surface. This achievement escalated the competition between the two superpowers. Unlike the American missions, which were plagued by failures and setbacks, the Soviet program continued to make progress. Despite their triumphs, the USSR managed to send successful probes into Venus' atmosphere. The only point of contention with this approach was the limited design capacity. The Soviets quickly overcame their design issues and launched the most advanced probes of the Venera program during the 1970s. Their pioneering efforts allowed them to achieve the first simultaneous launches of Venera 4 and Venera 5. According to most historians, this was the most remarkable decade in the history of space exploration. 
Certainly, the U.S. attempted to develop similar launch strategies. So why did the Soviet program choose simultaneous launches into Venus? To understand this, you need to recognize that interplanetary travel requires advanced instrumentation to gather the most significant data and evidence. The probes were initially launched to survey the planet's surface, and that's exactly what happened with Venera 4. Since the launch went smoothly, the probe successfully entered Venus' atmosphere. The Soviet program continued with Venera 5, but this wasn't just a repeat of the first launch. The second probe was specifically designed to gather detailed information about the planet. Ultimately, the Soviets had to contend with the challenges of temperature, air pressure, and radiation on Venus. They didn't have to wait long for answers. By the mid-1970s, the Soviet program was entering the most advanced period of the Venera missions. Everything the USSR had done up to that point was about progress and improvement. It was about ensuring that their plans and developments were up to date, while also perfecting the methods and mechanics of interplanetary travel. For the second decade of the Venera missions, the Soviet Union aimed to complete exploratory missions. The most astonishing and exciting launch of this period was Venera 7. As the 11th Soviet probe entered Venus' atmosphere, it became the first spacecraft to send back data from another planet's surface. By this point, the planet's high temperatures, density, and surface pressure had already been recorded. The Soviets were also attempting to record Venusian sounds. The next major achievement for the program came in the mid-1980s when Venera 13 surpassed all previous interplanetary missions in terms of complexity. This spacecraft was the first to capture panoramic pictures of Venus' surface. Simultaneously, the Soviet program launched Venera 14 to gather similar information about the planet's surface. As the Soviet Union was perhaps the only country to recognize Venus' importance, the Russian Space Agency has revived its goals for Venus missions. Venera is an upcoming joint mission between Roscosmos and NASA to explore the atmosphere and surface of Venus. The name Venera refers to Venus in Russian. It is expected to launch in the late 2020s or early 2030s, with plans to study the planet's atmosphere, land history, and search for signs of present or past habitability. The spacecraft will include an orbiter, a lander, and potentially an inflatable to study Venus' environment in detail. The legacy of the Venera missions extends far beyond their technical achievements and global importance. These missions, initiated by the Soviet Union at the height of the Cold War, represented an apex of human ingenuity and determination in exploring the universe. Despite facing numerous challenges and setbacks, the Soviets persisted in their mission to uncover the secrets of Venus, a planet long believed to be hostile and unwelcoming. One of the most significant aspects of the Venera missions was their pioneering use of robotic probes to study planetary conditions and surfaces. These missions paved the way for future exploration beyond Earth's orbit and laid the groundwork for our understanding of planetary science. The data collected by the Venera spacecraft provided crucial insights into Venus' extreme climate, including its scorching temperatures, crushing atmospheric pressure, and toxic atmosphere dominated by carbon dioxide. Furthermore, the technological advancements achieved through the Venera program had broader implications for space exploration including the development of heat-resistant materials, robust communication systems, and effective landing strategies. These achievements contributed to subsequent missions to other planets like Mars and beyond. The lessons learned from the Venera missions continue to inform spacecraft design and operational strategies in contemporary space exploration efforts. Beyond their scientific and technological significance, the Venera missions also had profound social and political repercussions during the space race era. These missions symbolized the rivalry between superpowers for dominance in space exploration. For the Soviet Union, succeeding with the Venera missions was not just about scientific discovery but also about demonstrating technological prowess and philosophical superiority over the U.S. The global community closely followed each Venera mission, recognizing their significance in advancing humanity's understanding of the solar system. The successful soft landing of Venera 7 on Venus in 1970 marked a major milestone as the first spacecraft to transmit data from another planet's surface. This achievement highlighted the Soviet Union's ability to overcome the immense challenges posed by Venus' harsh climate. In addition to scientific instruments, 
the Venera spacecraft carried cameras that captured the first close-up images of Venus' surface. These photos revealed a rocky landscape dominated by rough plains and volcanic features, providing researchers with valuable insights into the planet's history and development. The panoramic images taken by later missions, such as Venera 13 and 14, further enhanced our understanding of Venus' surface morphology and composition. Despite their successes, the Venera missions also faced their share of failures and difficulties. Some missions either failed to reach Venus or experienced technical breakdowns that prevented them from sending data back to Earth. The harsh conditions on Venus, temperatures exceeding 450 degrees Celsius, 842 degrees Fahrenheit, and corrosive sulfuric acid clouds, posed enormous engineering challenges for spacecraft design and operation. Nonetheless, the perseverance and dedication of Soviet scientists and engineers involved in the Venera program paved the way for future missions to Venus and other celestial bodies. The legacy of the Venera missions lives on in the ongoing exploration of Venus by space agencies around the world, including NASA's upcoming Venus mission in collaboration with Roscosmos. Looking ahead, the Venera mission aims to build on the achievements of its predecessors by sending advanced instruments to study Venus' atmosphere, surface geology, and potential signs of past or present habitability. The mission represents a collaborative effort to uncover the remaining secrets of Earth's closest planetary neighbor and expand our understanding of the conditions that could support life beyond our own planet.